1.23 a.m. on April 26, 1986, operators in the control room of reactor number four of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant botched a safety test, resulting in an explosion and a fire that burned for 10 days. The radioactive fallout spread over thousands of square miles, driving more than a quarter of a million people permanently from their homes. It was the world's worst nuclear disaster to date. I first photographed Chernobyl for National Geographic in 1993. In 2005, I ventured deeper into the contaminated reactor than any Western still photographer. Here, radiation levels are so high that workers are allowed only one shift of 15 minutes per day. Radioactive remnants of the failed reactor continue to smolder inside the sarcophagus, a concrete and steel encasement hastily erected after the accident. Less than two miles from the reactor, the city of Pripyat, once bustling with nearly 50,000 residents, was only evacuated 36 hours after the explosion. Today, a chilling ghost town, its abandoned buildings are witness to the hasty departure. Ignoring radiation levels, some elderly have returned to their village homes inside the exclusion zone, preferring to die on their own contaminated soil rather than from a broken heart in anonymous city suburbs. A dramatic rise in cancers and abnormalities has been observed downwind of the failed reactor. Mothers are giving birth to unhealthy babies and the emotional stress and the memory of the tragedy weighs heavy on those lucky enough to survive. On the eve of the 25th anniversary of the disaster, I returned to the exclusion zone to continue my coverage. To my surprise, I realized I was not alone. While television audiences around the world were watching the Fukushima disaster unfold, buses filled with eager tourists traveled to Chernobyl to witness the aftermath of nuclear disaster firsthand. As the cleanup drags on longer than expected, I took my cameras again into severely contaminated areas with the understanding that the story continues. I know that my explorations are not without personal risk, but like many of my colleagues, I do this on behalf of otherwise voiceless victims. They expose their suffering solely in the hope that tragedies like Chernobyl may be prevented in the future. <laughs>